Hello everyone, welcome back to Abandoned Minds of Pennsylvania. Today we're going to be doing our introduction on what is coal and how it's formed. Uh, so today we're at a an, at an outcrop of what's known as bituminous or soft coal. And an outcrop is just where coal is exposed at the surface, uh, whether through natural or man-made causes, whether it be weathering or a construction area, road cut, previous mining, whatever it is, this is a natural exposure. So if you'd imagine many parts of Pennsylvania over 300 million years ago were a large, shallow uh, wetland and shallow body of water and filled with numerous plants. And as those plants would die or form and fall under the water, they would stack up and form what is called peat. Um, peat moss is still found in many places today. It's the same stuff you use for gardening. And that's the first step for the formation of coal. Now, if we cover that peat with sediment, turn to our super fancy whiteboard here. So we imagine our black line as our peat. So that's formed. Let's say it gets covered over by sediment, which I just have illustrated here in the blue. And that gets compacted, whether it's, you know, a couple feet or hundreds of feet of sediment over time. It'll compact this peat. The next stage for that peat would be turned into lignite, or brown coal. Um, lignite is very high in moisture, impurities, low in carbon content. Um, mostly just used in, in certain power plants. But if we take what is now our lignite, let's say we add more sediment over top, push down on that, we can now turn this lignite into bituminous or soft coal, which we're staring at here. This has a higher carbon content. Um, this particular same here is about 70 to low 80% carbon. Um, but bituminous really runs from about 40% up into the up into the 80% carbon content. Um, the rest of the content is made up of sulfur, volatile matters, moisture. Um, but bituminous is probably one of the most widely used coals. It's the most common occurring. And so what it was used for was anywhere from uh, steam generation and power plants, locomotives blacksmith shops it's used um, this is baked in an oxygenless environment uh, certain types of bituminous coal to drive off the sulfur and volatile matter and leave uh, you're pretty much pure carbon in a form that's called coke and it's used in the production of steel now if we go elsewhere especially eastern pennsylvania we covered all this over all of our bituminous and not only do we get the weight of all the other sediments above it compacting it, um, let's say we get some plate tectonics involved. And so instead of having nice horizontal beds like this, now it gets folded and compressed. Layer upon layer upon layer. And so even though we're looking at only one bed of coal here, um, this process may repeat over and over again, this same process here. So you may get you know, one bed of, of peat as that's getting compacted. Maybe another swamp forms on top of it, makes another bed of peat, more sediment on top of that, and it repeats the process. And so in a lot of spots in Pennsylvania, you don't just find one bed of coal. You, know, you may find anywhere from 2 to, to 12 or even more. And in areas such as the anthracite, these beds are folded. Um, some of them get pretty extreme. Uh, you know, they may come up and over and down. Um, and it was that extra heat compaction that turned that bituminous coal into our anthracite, like I said. And that is your carbon content from pretty much 89% up to the very high 90% carbon. Um, so it's very low in sulfur, very low in impurities. And if we take a look, lost a little bit of our light, sunlight behind the clouds here. But, 
you look in this area here, um, starting at our top actually, you can see this is just rock. And then we have a very small parting of coal, of only about an inch. And we switch to a slate. And then we're back to about oh, four inches of coal. Uh, here's about 10 inches of slate. And then we're back into probably about foot and a half of coal. Back up a little bit here. And we're back into slate coal, and it kind of repeats the process down through here. And so with this, if you could just imagine this on, on a larger scale, if you're looking out, whether it be in the anthracite region or out in western PA, you know, this may be one coal bed. And then you've got a rock parting, another coal bed, rock parting, another coal bed stretched over a couple hundred feet. Or even a couple thousand feet. And these partings, even though this is counted as one coal bed, are your... Uh, different sedimentations and so you know this was an area of, of good coal formation up through here and then that swamp or shallow waterway may have been covered over um, there may have been a high water event or something covered it over with clays and silts and so that's where your shale and your slate come from and then it swamp was fairly healthy and your shallow wetlands were fairly healthy for a while and then you may have had another flooding event cover it covered it back over with with sand and silt formed your clays your sandstones your slates and then another little bit and then you know your coal and repeats the process um, not all coal seams are broken up like this um, and even the same coal seams in different areas may not be broken up as bad as this one is um, you can run into areas where um, you have many feet of good coal before you have any sort of impurities such as a, a shale parting or or a slate um, and if this was uh, in a mine it would be pretty much up to the discretion of what part of this was going to get mined because you're not going to you're not going to want to chase a lot of this material, especially this smaller one up here. You're going to want to ignore it. Uh, but where you run into the issue is if you mine, let that refocus, if you mine all this coal and rock out from underneath of it, this slate and this top little two inches of coal is going to have a really hard time adhering to that top rock. Now here it's a little bit more broken up because it's at the surface and it is weathered. Um, but those decisions are going to have to be made. Another thing, uh, as you drive through Pennsylvania, you notice a lot of comb banks, or piles, or slack piles, whichever you want to call them, slate piles. And what that is, is as they mine this, you're going to want to take your good coal, which this doesn't look as black, but it's, I said this is weathering exposed. But, break, yeah, break a piece off there. But you're going to want to take this, and you're not going to send this slate and rock to market. And so, whether it was at the coal face, you could uh, stack all this rock and slate back on, into an area you already mined. Or if there's a large quantity of it, you're going to send it to surface uh, to be dumped out in those large piles. Uh, at the breaker, any, any bit of coal that was kind of adhered to your rock, um, such as this here, uh, this piece here actually has slate and stuff on the bottom. You can either just break that off and send your piece of coal, or if it was too much slate, it would be thrown out into the comb piles, and then you have uh, individuals out there actually picking that apart or any coal that was missed by the breaker when they would sort this. Right. And this one continues down. There's another parting rock here and actually goes down about another four foot below us. In total, this is uh, this is about a seven foot coal seam here, six to seven foot. If you were to subtract all that rock out and add all this together. Um, like I said, one of the problems with this one is it does have many, many, many partings to it. And we'll look at some of the other examples of this. Um, 
when we get into some mines now that it's cooling down a little bit uh, we'll be making the trek into some so if anyone has any questions or anything like that please feel free to leave them in the comments or send us a message on our Facebook page, Band of Minds of Pennsylvania, or like I said, leave it in the comments there on the YouTube channel as well, Band of Minds of Pennsylvania. Um, and we'll be sure to get them answered as soon as we can. Appreciate everyone for the support. Hope everyone's doing well. More videos to follow. Thank you.